Sunday evening to everybody. Thanks for coming out on a, on a Sunday. Uh, great day for college football. Obviously, a lot of anticipation around the playoff, around the New Year's Six, and then uh, across the rest of the bowl landscape. It's uh, exciting now for the University of Illinois to be back uh, a part uh, of this really um, important part of the of the college football landscape to be in the postseason, uh, to have the chance to participate in a bowl game. Uh, exciting for, for us, for our players, for our coaches. Uh, obviously a very important step in the continued growth and development uh, of Illinois football. Uh, really proud uh, of the men in that room and, and uh, grateful to all the hard work that they put forward to get us to this place. Uh, congratulations to, to the rest of the Big Ten Conference. Uh, continue to represent the league well. Uh, nine bowl eligible teams this year, uh, three of which uh, will participate in the New Year's New Year Six, which I think is fantastic. Uh, congrats especially to Ohio State uh, for having the opportunity to represent the Big Ten in the playoff. Uh, obviously had a tremendous year for the Buckeyes and had a chance to be with, uh, with Gene yesterday and, and wish him luck. And uh, they'll have a great, uh, a great run in front of them and, and we'll all be watching and, and cheering for them. Uh, but in terms of the line, I uh, really excited to be headed out west. Uh, great chance to participate in what I think is a fantastic bowl game. Uh, the Red Box Bowl fits up very well for us. Uh, traditional rivalry in terms of the Pac-12, Big Ten opponents. Uh, looking forward to having a chance to play uh, a, a good Cal team out there. Uh, it's a great stadium, one of the great stadiums in our country. Uh, of course, has hosted the Super Bowl just on Friday night, hosted the Pac-12 championship. Uh, so it's a fantastic venue uh, for our university. Excited to be out in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, outside of Chicago. It has the second highest concentration of Illinois alumni anywhere in, in the United States. And so we expect a, a nice turnout, a lot of orange and blue uh, out in that part of the country. And, and we uh, know that there's a lot of excitement to have us head out that direction. Uh, so a lot to look forward to. Uh, obviously, great opportunity for our guys to continue to develop. Uh, work together during these these additional practices that the bowl game provides. Um, and uh, as I said at the outset, just really proud uh, of our coaches, of our players. Uh, we've not been in a bowl game for too long. Uh, and uh, it's great now to have uh, the opportunity to participate in the postseason. Uh, it, it's a group that's been through a lot of adversity. They've stayed the course. Um, and I think it's important that we, we, we don't confuse being happy with being satisfied. Uh, and we all understand that, uh, that we have bigger goals for Illinois football uh, and, and really excited about the, the path that we're on headed toward those goals. Uh, but the first step is to get back in the postseason and, and to be here now. A uh, great opportunity in the Red Box to go out, get that seventh win, play in that 13th game. Uh, first time that we've done that uh, in the last several years and uh, excited to take that step with this program and then uh, continue to build from there. So uh, I think. I'm done. I'll be back up. Do you want to do questions now or do you want to come up and do them later? Let's, let's go ahead and do questions for Josh. Then. Okay. Josh, did you, did you do any politicking at all? I mean, obviously, you, you know you're going to bowl. But did you try to upgrade it, I guess? You do a little bit, sure. You, you're, you're having conversations with the executive directors from a number of different bowl games. Uh, the Big Ten is unique. We're, we're fortunate as a league to have as many different bowl relationships as we do. Uh, but we also have uh, some clauses in, in our relationships where we try to avoid having repeat uh, attendees at, at certain games. Um, and so there wasn't uh, a tremendous amount of, of uh, speculation as you got down toward the end. It was pretty evident where we thought we were going to end up. We, we had a pretty good feel that it was going to be San Francisco uh, really for the last week. Uh, after looking at the landscape and having a good sense of where other schools had to go based on repeat uh, performances and the like. Um, but you never know until you know. Uh, and so it wasn't until we got the call this afternoon that we knew definitively that it would be the Red Box. Um, but, uh, but we did have a, a pretty strong sense that that would be the, the, the destination uh, for about the last week. Josh, you call this season magical in a tweet. Why, why do you think that's the word for this season? Well, I, I think that, you know, for me, it, it was really about seeing a group of guys come together uh, that has overcome tremendous adversity uh, to, to have the two performances that we did against Wisconsin and Michigan State. You know, we could have won six games a lot of different ways. Uh, and there's no question that, that we left some, some wins out there on the field that I think a lot of us would have liked to have gotten. But the thing you have to remember is if you win some of those games, it sort of changes changes the universe, right? If you go out and you beat Eastern Michigan, you go out and you, you maintain that lead against Nebraska, 
all of a sudden things may fall differently when you play the Wisconsin game. So uh, as you as you look at the season to have those two comeback wins, uh, two of the most, I would say, transcendent wins in the history of Illinois football, uh, to be able to get those victories in the same season uh, at, at this moment in our program's history, uh, and then to be able to, to capitalize on that momentum. Uh, one of my favorite games was the win at Purdue. Um, you know, there, there were a lot of things that I think fell into place. And, and uh, again, I think it's important. Um, yeah, I, ha I have used the word magical. I think, it, I think it was a really special season. And I feel really good for uh, the guys in that locker room. But I, I don't think, again, you want to confuse uh, terms. You know, just because something was magical, just because something was special, again, doesn't mean we're satisfied. It doesn't mean that we're content. It means that we're progressing. It means that we've made the, 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 the next step in the requisite steps that we need to make to continue to, to pursue our goals. And um, you know, this, this team really pleased with the way they came together and, and were able to do that. What is the difference between five and six wins? I know numerically one, but what's the, what's the difference for this program to have? I, we needed to get in the postseason. I mean, we, we, we've known that for a long time. I mean, as we talk about, again, accomplishing our goals, is our, is our goal two, three, four years from now to win six games? It's not. You know, we have goals to compete in that game that was played yesterday over in Indianapolis. And we want to win the division. We want to win the Big Ten. Uh, we want to be one of the teams that's being selected for those New Year's Six games on the, on the ESPN Bowl special that all of us watched this afternoon. Uh, but in order to do that, you have to follow a progression. And, and uh, the first step in that is to get back in the postseason, to get into a 13th game. Uh, and so it was, it was huge for our program. And, and to be able to do it in the manner that we did, um, you know, I think most of us who were at East Lansing will never forget that game. Uh, and uh, I think it really helped put a, a punctuation mark, uh, uh, an exclamation point, I should say, on, on the season and, um, and, and help people feel uh, good as we head into the, into the seventh game, or seventh chance to get the seventh win. just to kind of go over things about what went well, what didn't well. You, I mean, you're familiar with those kind of meetings, but the schedule now has kind of changed. Yeah, we, Coach and I talk regularly, right? And we're in, in, in ongoing communication. We're always talking at least two, three, four times a week uh, throughout the season. Uh, and so, you know, we'll have a, I, I guess, as, as formal a sit down as, as we generally do uh, at some point once things settle down. The new recruiting calendar is, has made this immediate few weeks after the, the regular season concludes, uh, pretty challenging to, to find a lot of time together. Uh, but once we get through the bowl, once we get through the holidays, um, you know, we'll have a chance to sit down and, and re reflect a little bit. Um, but uh, again, I, uh, he and I are in, in constant communication. We're always sharing ideas, feedback, uh, both directions. And um, so by the time we get to any kind of end of the year meeting, there's not a lot that's, that's unsaid by that point in time. Tried to take a lot of people with you on this trip. I mean, obviously the team's going, the coaches. But beyond that, you have a large travel party. It was finance a part of this consideration at all for you guys or not? Uh, well, finances are always a consideration. Uh, but but certainly, having not been to a game since since 2014. Uh, there is an opportunity here for, for us to say thanks to a lot of people who have been involved in helping build this program. Uh, there aren't a lot of people involved in Illinois athletics who don't have hands on the football program specifically to make our games happen and all the, the ancillary things that happen around fighting Illini football. And so uh, we will take, a, I think, a nice sized party out. Um, a lot of people who have, have had a hand in getting us to this place and we want them to feel a part of, of this postseason. Uh, and so we're, we're working through that now and trying to figure out exactly uh, who will be on the, on the plane and who won't. Um, but it's uh, uh, a lot of, you know, it takes a village uh, to, to build a football program. And uh, there's a great opportunity here to, to celebrate uh, the next step in that progression for us. The band will go. Absolutely. We're, we're having uh, conversations with them now about how many and in what way. But uh, we will certainly be well represented by the band while we're out there. I think you kind of answered your own question. I, I think it, it is. It's just it's just that next step in the progression uh, is. I, I kind of said it earlier to Jeremy. I, I don't see six wins being the bogey year after year. I think it, at some point we will be talking about 
uh, what kind of bowl we expect to go to, not will we get into a bowl. And uh, but before you can have those conversations, you've got to get you've got to get back into the bowl business. And, and it feels really good uh, for us to be back in the bowl business and, and to be a part of uh, this really exciting. Uh, meaningful part of, of college, the college football season. And um, and so, yeah, I, I think between the things that have happened this year, uh, the new building being open, uh, the things that we've, hap that we've seen happen on the field, some of the big upset victories, uh, now to be in the bowl, to go out and win the bowl, uh, I think will be important for us. Um, and and then you just continue to, to build on that momentum. And uh, I mean, that's how this works, right? As, as you start to build a program, as you go through the heavy lifting uh, of taking a, a program from where this one has been to where we want it to go, uh, momentum is, is, is critical. Uh, and, and you have to start gaining it with, with incremental steps. And, and this one's a big step. This one's a big step for us. Uh, I don't know, easier, harder. I, I, I think that it, it certainly is a great opportunity for us to say thanks to a lot of the people who have, again, been so instrumental in getting us to this place. You talk about that, uh, the, the Smith Center across the way. There were a lot of people who stepped forward with very generous donations at a point in time where there wasn't a lot to, to point to, uh, where uh, you talk about faith you know, being belief without evidence. Uh, and, and there were a lot of people who, uh, who stepped forward and showed a lot of faith um, without having seen tremendous evidence. Uh, and we'll be forever indebted to them um, because they've, they've helped us put, put ourselves onto this path. And, um, and so I, I think it's, uh, there are a lot of different emotions, I think, that you feel uh, when you get a, a step like this one in, in a program's development. Uh, but certainly gratitude and gratefulness is, is one of them, not an, and not an insignificant one. Uh, and so that, that's been a big part of our communication here over the last several weeks as well, has just been taking the opportunity to reach out to some people who have been with us through the hard times um, and, and just uh, making sure they appreciate the moment that we're enjoying together and, and that they are understanding of how uh, of a grateful we are for their, for their support. Do you see any similarities between the last two years when you were players and going to the Michael FPC Bowl? I, I do. I, I do. There's no question. I, I think that, you know, it, the story's been pretty well told at this point. But for us to, to move through in several seasons of challenge, similar to what we did when I was a uh, freshman, sophomore here, uh, and then to have kind of your breakout season, I, I think is is very similar. To have a couple big upset victories as part of that breakout season, I, th I think are uh, are a part of it. Um, and you know, and so I, I think there there certainly are similarities, and we've just uh, tried to stay the course. I, I think the thing that I admire as much uh, about coach as anything is just his ability to to stay in the same place. Uh, I go in and see him every Sunday morning during the season, and you know, whether we win or, or lost. Uh, I know I can expect to see the same person, and, and I know our team is seeing the same person as well. And uh, and, and I think that helps you uh, navigate what can be a pretty uh, emotional season, you know, a lot of highs, a lot of lows. Um, and, and one of the secrets to success, I think, for Coach and, and for our football program has been uh, making sure that we enjoy the highs uh, and that we, we understand the lows, but we always – uh, I think fairly quickly come back to center, uh, and and that I think has has allowed us to uh, to build uh, through through some of the challenge. I think this will be a good time for Coach Josh is going to stick around for some mm -hmm. questions, but I know Coach we're going to get him on the road. You got one more. Go ahead. Okay, you talked about staying the course in faith. I'm curious how tough that was for you at two and four. You know, in, in October there, when this team was not on a good projection. Uh, staying the course, having faith. That part's not hard, you know. That that's because I I know who we have as a leader. I know who we have in the locker room. I know, uh, and and you've heard me say some of these things, right? I mean, I I knew when we were sitting at two and four and we got together and talked about the Ireland trip. Uh, I told you that we had a group of people over there who was doing everything possible to turn it, uh, and and I knew it from the time that I'd spent in the building. I I knew it from the conversations I was happening, or that I was having. Uh, from attending the practices, from being on the planes, from being in the hotels. Um, so it wasn't hard for me to have faith that, that the program was changing. Um, but that doesn't mean that it makes it any easier to, to watch the team go out and struggle. And so uh, more than anything, the emotions that I've experienced this year have really been um, 
just I'm, I'm just so excited and happy for our football program and for the and specifically for the people who are involved in it. Um, you know, it was hard not to tear up after that Wisconsin game, just knowing all that has gone into making a victory like that possible. Uh, in, in, and to see the emotion and the enthusiasm after the Michigan State game. And again, just having had a, a, a firsthand glimpse of uh, the sacrifice and the challenge that's required to get to that place. Uh, just so proud and, and, and happy for, for the players, for the coaches. Um, so faith isn't hard for me uh, because I see what's happening every day behind the scenes. Um, but that doesn't make the, the day-to-day struggle of it any easier. Uh, and so uh, it's been really rewarding um, for me, but, but especially for these guys to just see the, the results start to come. And, and again, it's not finished. Uh, there's a difference between being happy and being satisfied. Are we happy? Absolutely, we're happy. Uh, we're, we're thrilled to be back in the postseason, thrilled to be going to a great bowl game. Uh, are we satisfied? Absolutely not. And I think that's key. I think if you sat down with the three teams who are 12 and 0 in the country right now, they would say they're not satisfied. And, and uh, so, no matter where we go, uh, we will always be hungry, and we'll, we'll continue to to um, push for for ever better. Is is one of the, the tricks I think for us to be successful.